All right, welcome. This is our first preview of the Hawthorne Invitational and the Hawthorne Spring Tournament in general because we've got two days of contest action, but the highlight being the Invitational as it is a special event. And I'm going to be joined this year by Ed DeRosa, um, who you can see on the screen right now, who's a close friend of mine. I'm looking forward to us working together again. It, it's It's been a little while. Um, if people aren't familiar with you, uh, do you want to just give a, a brief overview of who you are, where you're coming from, and uh, your participation in this year's tournament? Yeah, all the way from Louisville, Kentucky. I'll be up at Chicago for the Invitational itself. Still in Louisville for this portion of the hype video. Looking forward to talking to some of the participants. I'm a dabbler uh, in the contest scene. Done okay here or there. Haven't uh, reeled in the big one or any big ones like some of the people we're about to talk to. And that's what I'm looking forward to most, just sort of picking their brain. We often, Emily, speak to them after the fact or during the contest. But I think this opportunity to talk with them about preparation, not just handicapping, but it it's a gauntlet playing in these tournaments and just being prepared from a mental aspect, I think is as important going into it. So looking forward to the conversation and certainly looking forward to working with you. Well, let's talk a little bit about the tournament because there are, there are two separate tournaments. So we'll talk about the Hawthorne tournament first, which is, which is open to everybody. And that's a, uh, there are two one day tournaments and probably the player's preferred format because it gives you that $500 bankroll, allows you to play all the tracks that we're offering on the contest days and allows for any type of wager as far as playing your multis, playing tries, playing supers, playing win bets. And again, that's open for everybody. And there's a good price format three spots open to the hawthorne invitational we've got 50 of the most winningest contest players <laughs> um with multi-millions that have won uh in the tournament multiple nhc winners previous invitational winners nhc tour winners hall of famers so it really is kind of a, a who's who coming into there anybody's anybody's chance to win um anything you want to add about the the contest format or the field established yeah, that uh, the 500 with the basically uh, the whole menu available to you, I believe, is is pretty unique, if not very unique, and that it's the only one. I'm not familiar with other tournaments who have done that, and I know Hawthorne has uh, been a, a pioneer in that respect. Well, as you mentioned that there are certain different formats for, for different tournaments, the Hawthorne Invitational does have some parameters in there as there are $250 wagers on four of the mandatory races and then $250 on three optional races, which is a change from the previous year. And then going into the last race of the tournament, which will be the Hawthorne Derby, it's a $750 minimum wager. Personally, as someone who is not as good as many of the players in the Invitational, uh, both in terms of just the, the handicapping prowess, but also the willingness to go all in. I like this type of format because I, I feel like it levels that playing field and then you just kind of got to beat them in terms of wager selection. And frankly, it's going to make for better streaming when you and I talk to all the participants. So that's part of the fun too, is knowing that the whole room is involved in a certain race. It absolutely is. And um, as we talk, as we talk about that, I think we should bring in the first person that we'll talk to in this tournament, who's actually won this tournament, one of the locals, one of the, one of the fan favorites, Frank Mastari. Frank, how are you doing? All good. Glad to be a part of this and uh, coming back again and uh, always look forward to Hawthorne weekends. Now, Frank, you won the 2019 Invitational in addition to, to playing those tournaments. And as we were talking about the format, and it's changed a little bit this year, is that going to change your strategy? How do you kind of see that from year to year in previous Invitationals going into this year? Yeah, not much changes for me in live money contests. Uh, I know what my bankroll is. I know what I need to get to usually to win the thing. And most of my bets are uh, hinged around that. I'm not the kind of guy that's, uh, I'm not a grinder. I I'm one of those who I'm going to, I'm going to play uh, big exactas or tries, whatever the contest allows. And usually each one of my wagers is going to be enough to get me up to the top of that leaderboard. So I on this one, I think it's eight different wagers, if I recall, three, uh, Optionals, yes. four mandatory, and one more at the, for the Hawthorne Derby. So um, the way I'm going to break it down, it's I'm going to have 10 different chances, basically, when I divide my money up 
to hit something relatively large. And if I'm right one of the 10 times, that one wager is probably going to get me, you know, five figures plus uh, at the minimum. And then I know I'm going to be at the top of that leaderboard. That's how I play it. It's a lot of uh, tur- tournament styles. We're talking about game selection in racing, Frank, whether it's wagers or or tournaments. Uh, for you, this uh, in your backyard and live money, is that your preferred or do you actually like playing when online allows it? How do you mentally prepare for all day at an OTB versus when it's an ADW or in a ballroom or at the track? I'm one who likes to talk and meet a lot of people at times and uh, sitting with my buddy, Jim Bennis. That's how I distract him is uh, I talk and drive him crazy to the point where he'll eventually leave the table. So that's how I throw, like to throw him off the game. But typically I'm always live money um, concentration level when you're in your own office at home is probably a little easier and a little better, but uh uh, being around everybody else is awesome. It's a fun atmosphere to be with the uh, other players. Now, one of the things that since we do have, it's like a combination of both, right? Because it's it's live bankroll, but then there's going to be some of those races that are those mandatory races. How do you approach that race when it's not one of your strongest opinions? Because when your strategy is to send it, you know, and to go hard on your stronger opinions, a lot of times those mandatory races come up and you're you don't really have a strong opinion or see that there's a lot of value. And in this situation, you're going to have to bet $250. How are you going to approach those races? Most likely I'm not going to try to save that $250 by, you know, being conservative. I'm still going to take a shot. If I don't like the race, uh, maybe I'll still make, uh, you know, I'll spread a little bit in tries or spread a little bit with some prices and exactas uh, to get to pad my bankroll. But most likely I'll find something to maybe make, you know, $225 exactas and and still try to make a score there. One of the other things I want to mention, just kind of bringing back to this tournament from from last year or previous years, is having those additional optional races. Because I know last year, by the time we started our coverage for the mandatory races, nobody had really played their optional. <laughs> this year, I feel like there's going to be with those three, there's going to be people playing early and often. And so do you see that kind of changing maybe the, the overall or the, the, the bankroll play once we get into those mandatory races? If it's the first race of the whole contest, I could be playing one of my optionals right there. If it's a strong opinion I have. And, and with that uh, being a strong opinion that that could really put the pressure. If you're, if you're right on other players to really have to start betting you know, a little bit out of their comfort level. You know, I'm one of those. I like to put scores on the board if I can early. That's always my goal is to, uh, you know, play the mind games with the other guys you're up against. And uh, and I'll be sitting at a table, I'm sure, with three of the best, with my son, Jim mm-hmm. Bennis, Mike Melva Hill, probably. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't talk much, uh, you know, about what we like or what we don't like. And even my son, when – we're competing against each other. He wants to beat me as bad as I want to beat him. And and there's not a lot of conversation. And some of us, uh, you know, me and Jim Bennis talk daily about opinions. But when it comes to contests, we don't even call each other in the mornings a lot of times because we don't, you know, we respect each other and we don't want to, uh, you know, step on each other's toes. And uh, so it's a good rivalry. But uh, if I'm not going to win, I hope one of those guys do. And I and I don't want to see the out-of-town guys win. You know, Justin <laughs> do and you know, Steve Simonovich and John Fishers. Yeah, but they're just going to come in from out of town and hopefully donate to uh, our economy. I asked you about the scoreboard watching maybe when, when you're lower, but you you talked about, you know, jumping out, getting some money early. When when you're on top or are you do you ever play defense live money or for you, uh, you're always looking to just press those strong opinions and, uh, you know, foot on the gas to build the lead even more? Yeah, I'm definitely one of those who, if I get a lead, you know, I'm not going to bet myself out of a victory or off the scoreboard. You know, if if I got a decent size bankroll and I know it's going to get me a guaranteed top three or a guaranteed prize, um, I'm not going to get crazy and, and, you know, give all that money back that I worked hard to earn. But I'm still going to play some, uh, you know, decent amount of things where, uh I'm going to still make another nice score, hopefully, 
because you're you're a little bit of a sitting duck when you're in the lead. You know, even though you got a big lead um, this weekend in one of the contests, uh, Mike Mulvihill, my good friend, he hit for thirteen thousand in a thousand dollar buy-in contest, and he thought he was home free, and he got run over by two people. So when we talk about that. Do you have a target a target number like what you think is going to win the tournament? I know you mentioned that you want to be in the five figures, but that could be that could be a lot. That could be ten or ninety nine. So where where do you kind of see with uh, with this type of bankroll what the final will be? You hit it right on the head. It's between ten and ninety nine. That's exactly what it's going to be. <laughs> now I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure if some of the bigger players hit, especially early. I'm pretty confident that the winner has to have 20,000 plus in their bankroll at the end. Uh, but this year with those three optionals, that's going to open up to a lot, a lot of opportunities for uh, making some scores on your races that you choose. So I think the scores are going to be pretty high. And, and especially if you see someone hit early, that's going to really, really shoot it up to people going for some bigger scores. With the Hawthorne Derby being the the concluder as a handicapper, will you spend more time on that going into the day? Or do you sort of realize, well, depending on what the scores are, is how I'm going to play the race, and you'll worry about sort of sussing it out closer to the actual race itself? I'll be prepared uh, for all the races that are mandatories. Uh, I'll handicap probably the Kentucky circuit for my optionals and I'll be ready before the first, I'll know what I'm doing most likely before that first race of the contest happens. And I'll have Duff A, B, and C plans, depending on what the leaderboard is for the Hawthorne Derby. Talking about the, the Hawthorne Derby and even bringing in some of the Kentucky circuit is, is last year's field was very quality. We had a lot of horses that came from Kentucky Downs. And I think that sometimes if you're you're going into that last race, sometimes that helps you because a lot of those races being maybe claiming events or into conditions where you don't have the quality, that's a different level of handicapping and play than playing those those stakes races where you have quality horses that pretty much know what they're bringing every time. I would much rather bet 6250 now winners of two claimers somewhere or or maiden whatever uh, maiden 25 somewhere I would rather bet those than a grade one and, and I know I get laughed at a lot by people saying oh that's foolish that's crazy but my theory is in a grade one race there's 12 horses full field the separation and talent for grade one horses is so minimal from top to bottom, in my opinion. And it comes down to luck and trips and all of that kind of stuff where when I'm playing a maiden claiming 25, there could be a 10 length or more difference in talent between the best and the worst horse. And I know that, and, and I can capitalize on those horses who are getting action, who are, you know, eight, 10 to one, who I know, are 10 lengths worse than the horse I think is going to win. And, and that leads to value. This is a, a good kickoff. I can tell uh, we're going to learn a lot and hopefully our audience will as well. Really appreciate you sharing some of your insight with us on contest play. Great. Thanks for having me guys. We're going to stream, stream the Hawthorne Invitational live. So make sure that you're following the channel, hit those subscribes, likes. That's going to be both on the Hawthorne and your, your spa space down at that's Horse right. Racing Nation. So, Two ways to watch. We're looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Make sure if you follow, subscribe, hit those like buttons, and hopefully we'll see you. Um, come say hi if you see Ed or I around. Always looking forward to meeting some new people and part of the horse racing community.